Y'all loved that video where we fought the highest rune level boss available first, so how about a sequel where we do the reverse of that? Let's fight the bosses worth the least amount of runes first and move up. Wait, that's easy. So let's add more rules. One, we can only go to the next boss or places we've already been. No early grinding, no grabbing upgrade materials. Number two, our stats will be decided by a random die roll, which means our stats and our weapons will be pretty bad. And we won't get things like the Physic Flask until we've already beaten 58 bosses. This one's really bad. To watch runs like this live, follow us on Twitch. We find weird ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel and watch some exclusive episodes and like and subscribe because it's nice it's just nice to do i'd appreciate it now let's get going in a proper order We're kicking things off as Rando Calrissian and Cowabunga into Limgrave as a wretch with a nice flat 10 in every stat. Kali gives us a crafting kit and I already screwed up. That was fast. The first boss is right after the Cowabunga zone through a little path and we can fight the Soldier of God, Rick. This is undoubtedly the hardest boss in the game. He has a sword. He can swing. That's so dangerous. What the hell? Why would someone do that? I can't believe this is the lowest level rune boss. How could they get harder? Unfortunately, the only reward are the runes you get for killing him. You can't even get his amazingly dangerous sword that is a, that is a sword. Let's go get a horse from Melina and scoop up the Lord Sword and Great Sword, a great sword that is the sword that Godric Soldier Man was using. And it's close to the main path, so we're allowed to grab it. Start leveling up and it's scatter shot, like throwing peanut butter at a dartboard. We will be able to control our stats a little bit the strength physic tier that's also on the way to the next boss once we get the physic flask i'm sure that's on the way to an early boss probably like first 10 or so Save Alex on the way, and then we have to go fight an NPC to get to our next boss, Nerd Juice. He's pretty dangerous when you don't have any clothes on. Clothes stop bleeding, that's why you have to wear them in hospitals. He bleeds us out. Come back and we set him into the sky with a stamp upward cut. It's really fun. Doesn't work great on patches though. He has a shield and a weapon. Dang, things are escalating. A shield and a weapon? It's fine. Obviously patches isn't hard. I just wanted to launch him and that kind of screwed us up the first time. Next boss is close to the Kale Church, and hey, it's Ronnie actually trying to help by giving us some dogs. We immediately take those dogs to fight another dog, the Beast Man of Faramazula. Some of the bosses aren't going to be worth talking about a lot. This is one of them. Just kind of hit him, let the dogs hit him. Wow. Looks like the gods of fate want us to get some luck early with Arcane. Reduvia is an amazing weapon. We got it when we killed Nerd Juice, and it has very low stat requirements. We just need 13 decks and 13 Arcane, and it's good to go. Should happen soon. Do I feel lucky? On our way over to the pumpkin head, we grab a twin blade, plenty of decks incoming any minute now, and grab the great epi, but die trying. More like the great deathy. Not my best work. Pumpkin head time with dogs. I'm not sure I've ever broken this thing's stance, but apparently you get to crit into the shoulder. That makes sense, though I'd like the folks at FromSoft to Google CTE. Pretty sure that big helmet is protecting against some hits, but his brain is just bouncing pinball style in his skull. And I'm feeling tilted. The grace glitched, so hopefully we don't want to do the selling quest later. We can still come back here. Backtracking is allowed, but I don't see shard spiral being a major goal for this run, especially because we get the 13 arcane we need for Reduvia, and we're just a few levels of decks away from using it. Obviously, that's the move early game. Coastal cave time, and I'm sorry, Spirit Ash haters, but bringing in Istvan, three dogs, and charging into the demi-human cave is really fun. Maybe it's not an optimal challenge or whatever. It's more of a ladder match with lots of wrestlers all trying to get that briefcase. Given the choice between the two, I choose the ladder. Stormfoot Catacombs time. I think they make sprays for that. Talk to a podiatrist if you suffer from it. Killing gargoyles is going to be a pretty regular thing and it's not for levels. We'll maybe get like three or four by the time this whole run is over from gargoyles. They're just really fast and if you don't take them out, they Katamari Damashi behind you into a big ball of bleed. Urtree Burial Watchdog here. This was the first boss I ever fought in Elden Ring. I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to make it break the columns only to find out uh, that doesn't do anything. I hope you're hungry for nothing. 
Oh well, we get even more arcane. Wow, maybe we won't just be proficient with the Reduvia, we'll be good with it. Death Touch Catacombs next, really simple skeletons to avoid, and an Uchi we might use, though I'd prefer the Reduvia, and the stat requirements are lower at this point. Black Knife Assassin is already injured, so we just kind of whack it. In addition to being injured, this one doesn't have the Blade Beam of Death, and has way less health than any of the others. Finally, we get some vigor for the run, but that's not my goal. Let's explain it while we're going to Lernia. If we level all the stats evenly with randomness, even 30 vigor would mean we're probably around level 161. That means that we'll be getting one or two shot by most bosses until we get the Ritual Shield Talisman on the way to the Godfrey Shade. Now, hey, that's a mid-game boss, right? Probably number 50 or something. Maybe like 80 at the worst. Nope, 127. So while normally I am a vigor-pilled game where Vigor is not really doing anything for us, and I'd rather get stats to kill bosses faster. Anyway, two fingers. We'll boost our faith by five if we end up wanting that, and we might as well fight this Lindell Knight for the Lightning Prayer Book. Not great at low level. Big shield, big lightning damage. Although, I was playing it too safe, weirdly. His poise isn't that great, so if you hit him while he's swinging in, you can interrupt him and get him staggered. I'm really afraid of the Minotaurs here. They're probably going to insta-kill us with a headshot, but I guess they missed? I'll take that. Hey, Phil, why are you going so far north in Lernia? Easy. Hot take, lying isn't nice. I'm the first person to say this. Nobody else has ever had a problem with dishonesty. Maybe you didn't know this, but lying can hurt people and it's really easy to do on the internet. We're in the Black Knife Catacombs, one of the worst dungeons in this game. It's overganked. There are too many skeletons and they don't stop respawning until you smash the necromancers. They hide behind corners waiting to ambush strike you, which will combo into the skeletons that are chasing you. And we don't have vigor. Every time you want to fight the Black Knife Assassin in here, you need to ride up a guillotine while two skeletons are sniping you and you can't hit their necromancer so they just respawn as you kill them. You just have to ride the blade and hope they're nice. Once you do get to the black knife, there's no stake of America and you can't summon an ash since this is a secret starting boss. This one has over twice as much health as the last one as the blade of death move, has better physical resistances and is in a room the size of an RV. It's not ideal. She can also misty step to the other side of the room, zipping all around like a bug. Finally, she's got those Marth melee magnet hands on her grab. That's a one shot with our HP. How does this black knife drop the same amount of runes as the other one? That's just so stupid. It's so much deeper into the game and just objectively much harder. This is ridiculous. After getting ganked by the skeletons a few times for funsies, we make it back to the black knife and win with the power of stance pressure. And then... 4200! Black Knife Catacombs, 1600. Death Touch Catacombs, 1600. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Okay. Fextra Life lied. Apparently, according to chat, uh, the last stream we did of this run, I was informed they have fixed it and it is now correct at 4200. But that wasn't the case the day I did this run. So what do I do? Do we reset? No, there's a much simpler solution. Who gives a shit? This run won't fix the housing market. It's not gonna lower the price of bread. It's a silly internet gameplay video and it's all about having fun. And more arcane? Um, can I have a crumb of decks? Well, after that, everything just kind of feels like a steamroll for a bit. Guardian Golem is super free. Gives us the Blue Dancer Charm, which might end up being really useful. We'll die in one to two hits anyway. Might as well hang Dong and deal more damage. Murkwater Catacombs has the best catacomb puzzle. You walk forward, pull a lever, you're done with the puzzle. The boss is equally chatted out. It's the Grey Warden Duelist. Look at this cape toss. You're so cool. Yeah, he's cool. He's not hard. Limgrave tunnels are pretty cool. Lots of smithing stones you can grab on the way down to level up a weapon if you felt confident in upgrading something. I have FOMO here. What if I grab something better later? Stone Digger Troll is also easy. Break his ankles and win. I'm kind of ass at fighting the Bloodhound Knight. I can admit that, but it's my fault for not being more aggressive. After dying once, we just head in and smash, smash to break the stance in a chain that never lets him move. Shit, I should just really script every fight. I know my channel is about seeing how fun these challenges would be for a casual runner, but what if I practiced every fight and run before I started doing it and did it all perfectly? We, we don't do that here. Off to the Weeping Peninsula, and we can grab some great stuff on the way. Morningstar is a hammer, we already have the stats for it, and it's got bleed. Big stance and bleed. I love 
view. Then the turtle shield, which is basically a much heavier version of the turtle talisman that doesn't have to go in your talisman slot. It's over five times heavier. But putting it on our back is so much better considering we're only gonna have one pocket until Margit. I mean, that's Margit though. He's what, boss 30 or something? What the f What the f by the way, this whole list, if you want to try and do this run, it's on the Patreon. You can just join it at any amount. I haven't figured out tiers for Elden Ring content, so right now it's just sort of give me whatever you feel like you can. I'd appreciate it. Okay, time for the Morn Tunnel. It's pretty useless. Basically does the same thing the Limgrave Tunnel does. Hand you a bunch of Smithing Stone 1s for your early weapon, but it's further into the game, takes longer to navigate, and is just kinda here. The boss is a scaly misbegotten who does be rolling around, but he's not really a problem. The anchor is very cool. I'm not dunking on that, but if you're not here to get the anchor, there's no reason to come here. That's kinda how I feel about a lot of the tunnels and catacombs. A few more sacred tiers and a faith boosting tier, so if we need to, we can get plus 15 faith pairing it with the two fingers for two minutes. Could be big value. It's also on the way to the Tomb's War Catacomb, a 100% useless cave with the Miranda flower at the end. I know this is a lame boss, but I do prefer this Miranda to the one from Mass Effect. At least this one isn't just Dwight Schrute in spandex. You can stance break a flower and bleed a flower? Okay, what a world. Now it's time to suffer. Time for a Crucible Knight in the Stormhill Everjail. Now, wait a minute. You fought two of these for five hours in the Crucible Knight video. How could one Crucible Knight be a problem? Well, we're much lower leveled. We didn't have control over any of our stats and haven't upgraded any of our equipment. We could upgrade something, but what if I want something else later? Okay, that part of the struggle is kind of my fault. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an easy boss. I just didn't know how to make it easy right away. I'm okay with the patterns. I would say I'm getting more hits against him than he is getting against us. The problem comes in phase two, where really the only safe punish is against the tail attack, because every other attack can be followed up with the tail attack. Let's try to mix it up. We were using the Assassin's Crimson Dagger to get healing on critical hits, but maybe we need to just be more offensive. Enter Blue Dancer Charm and getting naked. The damage is definitely better, but it's not clicking in phase two. I really hate the dude's second phase. Trying it with the Lord Swords, it's heavier than the Morning Star, so it ends up having about the same damage after the Blue Dancer boost. It does get crits more often, and that's nice. It's a heavier weapon. Uh, it's not working either. Simply parry him. Okay, but the Buckler is sold by Gastock. Since we didn't start off as a bandit, that's our only way to get it. I didn't know where the small shields were. That would probably have been better. But looking it up now, it seems like we could have gotten one. The size of the shield greatly impacts the parry frames. And since I bought the heater shield from the round table hold, we have a very bad parry. Literally the worst parry in the game. It activates 50% slower than the buckler parry. It's active 60% less time and takes a bit more than 5% more recovery time. These are all frames, so it might not seem like a lot, but trust me i've bucklered this dude before it's pretty fun it's pretty easy i think buckler parry is fun against bosses that are parryable this is like bucklering with a peanut butter on the buckler call it a peanut buckler even when we do get the parrying down it takes a lot of parries to kill this dude in this one fight we parried one two three four five six seven eight like we parried him eight times and that didn't win. This just won't be consistent enough to get it done. Parrying isn't what we need. We need a hero. So Journey1 in chat asked why we weren't just kicking the shield. And might I say, hmm, what? And also, <laughs> huh? Turns out if you use the kick Ash of War, probably the worst Ash of War in the game, on the shield while the Crucible Knight is holding it up, he gets stunned and you get a free crit if you figure out the timing on it. We whiffed a lot. I'm still learning it. I thought you needed to sprint in and it took a few more whiffs even when we could make it free. Come back and give it a few more shots. But what is the reward for this again? The Crucible Tail? Which requires 27 faith. So why would you fight a boss like this so early? If you start as a profit and only invest in faith, you still need 11 levels to hit those requirements. And all those Crucible Tail Enjoyers are saying, well, you do need Dex and you need the Radigan icon. Also, the Black Knife down the road doesn't have the Death Blade, so maybe this Crucible Knight doesn't get the Tail Spin. I guess the Duo One later gets the Ordova Slam, but that's the easiest attack to avoid. Anyway, we get the kick working, crit him like 50 times, and eventually pull it out. Now let's get back to progress. Tomb's Ward Catacombs first. Cemetery Shade instantly hits us with the Wisdom Saving Throw hold person. That's what we get for randomized stats. I think Wretch would start with Constitution Saving Throws. The puppy saved us. Heading into the roads end, if nobody wants this Dexterity Physic tier, I'll take it. Nobody wants this Double Strike Beetle, I'll- Oh, ow, ow, ow!
Ow! Okay, fine. No double strike. Obviously, these bats are lifelink enjoyers. Magic the Gathering joke. The Road's End Catacomb is lovely. If you like gargoyles, gargoyles and catacombs are the reason this build is going to rank so low. Sometimes you'll whiff a gargoyle and just instantly get bled to death. Oh well, hit the snail, avoid the ghost knight, that's a boss. We can also grab the watchdog staff, sad, I think the staff got laid off, and then the Raya Lucaria soldier ashes, who will never get laid off. Canonically, Raya Lucaria is a state college that fought off the US military. It's worth noting, every boss we fight moving forward is worth more than the crucible knight, and like, sure, the knight's cavalry kills us once, we're just in a position where two hits can kill us, and a lot of bosses have two hit combos. I was trying to finish him off while riding, but it turns out I had to get him on his back and finish him there. Hey, phrasing! This Tibia Mariner drops more runes than a Crucible Knight. You just hit it and it dies. It's already dead when the fight starts. It's a Skellington. It's so easy. I'll be honest, I forgot what catacomb this is. Over the pants catacombs, sure. There's a lot of gargoyles on the way down. Then you get to the boss and it's Nerd Tree Burial Watchdog with half a dozen gargoyles. Neat. The Raya Lucaria soldiers can't really keep up or keep us safe with a million little dudes coming at us from all directions. It's a dice roll. Eventually we roll well and we're rewarded with some anti-gank measures, the demi-human ashes. Damn, after all this time, I thought the cave would have dried up, but nope, still water. Comboed and poisoned, not a great time. Fighting the Clean Rot Knight while poisoned isn't a great time. You definitely don't want to get comboed while you're poisoned, but we got it at the second try. Brief reminder, we're at 15 Vigor. We're basically the Vagabond starting stats. Dying's gonna happen a lot. Earthbore Cave worried me a little bit. The boss is a big rune bear. I usually suck at fighting those, but we just break his ankles really fast. Do the bears have bad stats? stance resistance? What the hell, I'll take a freebie. Especially because the next boss is the Bell Bearing Hunter, a real piece of crap. It hits way too goddamn hard for Limgrave. It's not safe to be up close to him, but it's really not safe to be far away from him. The Telekinesis Sword comes out faster far away than it does up close, jeepers creepers. We'll just learn the patterns right next to him, even if it's annoying. Sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're slow, sometimes they're weirdly both at the same time, somehow. Eventually we figure out we can break his stance as he spawns in with two charged attacks and a light attack, except when that doesn't work, I think walking in he has a little bit of super armor, I guess, maybe. Technically we can also bleed him, but his resistance is wildly high. Don't need to spend too much time here, even if we spent 30 minutes of in-game time here. Uh, Corey, just show me die a bunch and put some funny music over it. Lakeside cave time, we died to the Bloodhound Knight, remember how bad I am at fighting them, then we fell, so all that struggling we did to beat the Bell Bearing Hunter was for nothing. We lost all our money. I am never going to financially recover from this. Actually, it's fine. These bosses are dropping dog water amounts of runes. We're barely making enough to level up every two bosses. Playing all bosses really just makes you realize how many of these are a straight up waste of your time. If you want something for a specific build, go for it. But if you're not getting something for your build, leave out everything outside of the Dragon Barrel. Just don't fight it. What do they do to you? The reward is some useless thing, but ignore that. The real reward is going to the other side and meeting Latena, who won't let us summon her until we get a Halig Tree piece. Okay. Cliff Bottom Catacombs next. Can't wait for the Cliff Switch Catacombs in the DLC. Hey, wait, there's a switch at the bottom. And if you step on this button, you can shoot it with the arrows. I oh, thank you. The boss is an Erd Tree Burial Watchdog without a gank. It's worth less than the one that has gargoyles. Remember, the bosses are made up and the runes don't matter. That's right, the runes are like physical gifts on Christmas. Unless the physical gift is thin green paper rectangles, I don't want it. Listen, this is a long run of Elden Ring, and if you're playing a long run of Elden Ring, you're gonna see some silly shit. First, we fight a Deathrite Bird and it goes bad, but then I had an idea. What if we just had someone else do it? Nearby, John Cena is here to help us. This dude is jacked and will occasionally smack the Deathbird if we run around its toes enough. Hey Deathbird, this is my friend John Cena. He's got my back. I recommend not getting stomped by him. His foot traps the runes of its victims. <laughs> Rabbit, no!
Finally, we make it to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, where we can safely upgrade the weapons when we get out of here without worrying about wasting rocks on good stuff. I even do the risky jumping at the beginning. I'm not wasting anything. Head on down, the Crimson Dagger will let us heal up pretty consistently since we can auto-crit these stone diggers as they wail on the wall. The boss is nothing. Just roll over the Crystallion with the Demi-Humans. Up next, it's the Royal Revenant from Bloodborne 2. Isn't it cool that Bloodborne 2 was announced at the Game Awards? I'm recording this on the Wednesday before they air, so I'm just that confident. Now, this guy is really fast, and I wish there was some secret tech to fight them. Maybe like an interesting spell with an interaction one might not expect. Oh well. Going back to the wrestling jokes, he's a real heel, this Royal Revenant. He's healing all over the place until we bleed him down with the Reduvia. Five hours in, why don't we fight the first tree sentinel that's outside the first step? What a joke. What a goddamn joke this run is. Next up, we go to the chapel of... Anticipation. and fight the grafted scion. That clip is really a perfect metaphor for how this run is going by stretching a joke about delayed gratification even longer. Next, we're going to the Academy Crystal Cave, not to be confused with the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, which is a tunnel, not a cave, and for Raya Lucaria, not the Academy. That makes sense? If it helps, this boss is a Crystallian duo. The other one is one Crystallian solo. There were too many bosses and caves in this game. I'm not going to use Terra Magica unless we get a lot of intelligence very quickly. Knight's Cavalry in the Weeping Peninsula, this time I do get him off and put him on his back, but he doesn't finish. This one wants to finish while he's riding, and hey, that's fine too. I'm not picky. Back to the Black Knife Catacombs. The worst catacombs has two bosses, of course. Get janked on the way down, then get ganked against the Cemetery Shade because this dungeon apparently didn't have enough skeletons at this point. Quit out the first time. It's not a death. We won. It's just bad. Thankfully, this is the end of the second stream, so we're pretty close to being done. Oh, God. We are less than a fifth of the way through. We're back and we're going to Castle Morn, but this beetle will give us an easy solution to a boss later if it will stop teleporting away. Oh my god. Fine, we're gonna use the crystals. They've got good range and it doesn't make the thing teleport. Cool. Castle Morn time and nobody's gonna mourn Edgar because his daughter dies too. Uh, but we get the Banished Knight Halberd. It's already plus eight and a grape. Maybe we'll use those grapes too. We've got pretty spread out stats, although I think the Frenzied Flame Seal is still garbage. Speaking of things we might use, I've never used the Claymore. People say it's pretty good. Can't find it without a bit of trouble. End up going a bit too far with a bunch of gremlins chasing me. Even worse, we don't even end up using the Claymore when we go back for it. Our boss here is the Leo 9 Misbegotten. I didn't see the first eight, but I can pick it up from context clues. This dude's fast. Ouch. Second try win, and we get the Grafted Blade Greatsword. If we ever get enough strength, the Ash of War basically is Godric's Great Rune for a minute at a time. Could be helpful. We do need 27 strength, so not happening anytime soon. Avadan is an NPC boss, and worse, it's one with poise. Two hits kill us. They're fast, so we have to swap to a heavier weapon to interrupt the attacks. Next up is another Deathbird. I'm trying to get another giant team up going with the archer from Castle Morn doesn't work great. The Deathbird teleports away. Turns out it also works to just dash in and mash away with the Morningstar while on horseback. You just mashing it now. Time for some quick ones. Urge Tree Avatar. It's an Urge Tree Avatar. Wow. Cucked Everjail. It's balls. And I just hit his legs until he falls down. Wow. Then another Tibia Mariner. Wow. If we beat up an old man on the way to Omen Killer, we can scoop up Latena later. Very worth it. Now, this is just a Capra Demon homage, but with an open world twist. If you drop down right away, you can kill his dogs before the fight starts. Then summon some ghouls and we're ganking the would-be ganker. Amazing. Agiel next is... It's a geel. It's a dragon. Hit the head. Win. Hero of Zamora is really cool. Cool moves, cool look, cool sword, cool with ice. Doesn't really get to do any of that though. I think I've seen these dudes get their move set off like once since the first time I fought them. The poise is pretty bad. If you just don't stop hitting them, they don't get to start moving. We actually have a choice between bosses since the next two are worth the same amount. It's a Knight's Cavalry in Lernia or a Knight's Cavalry in Lernia, but further north. They're the same picture. 
Southern one drops a better reward, we'll go for that. Yeah, get two shot again. Maybe we can at least get some better armor. When we go back to the round table hold, we killed an old man. So we have to fight Ensha and get those sweet royal remains set that aren't that good, but it's better than what we have. Trying against the cavalry again, we just kind of push into him and swing until it works. But now we have a really good tool, the Ice Spear, one of the best ashes of war in the game. And we can put it on the plus eight halberd we got from Edgar to really start popping off really fast. Time to break the bad news to Latena. Some monster killed that old man. I guess she better just turn into a ghost turret and join us. Little problem, since she doesn't move, if you summon her at the edge of a summoning arena, she just warps out and goes home. Whoops. Okay, so we'll summon her a little closer to the Knight's Cavalry, but have to deal with a mob, and that doesn't work great either. We get bullied while trying to set her up. Try again, and she gets bullied to death, so fudge it. We'll just use the Ice Halberd against the Knight's Cavalry without any magic left, because we summoned Latena, so we can't even use Ice Spear. Hope that works. That works. Slowly. But it works. Ice Spear actually gets to show off against an Erd Tree Avatar. It has distance, status, stance pressure, and damage. It's a little slow, but only like a little slow. The next boss is another Erd Tree Avatar. How original. And then another Bell Bearing Hunter. Daring today, aren't we? Obviously, the Avatar is free. The Bell Bearing Hunter takes a few tries to get the rhythm right. It's fine. Anastia kills us on our way to a boss, that's embarrassing, so I get a little revenge, that doesn't count as a boss, I just wanted the sacred scorpion. Might as well, right? Out of ideas for a boss, why not just inflate the number? Just put two of one boss in a tight area. Google inflated pumpkin head in my tight area on your work computer to find out more. The pumpkin head duo don't even get like a full dungeon, which is good, I guess. Like, I, I definitely don't want another catacomb to run through. This just feels so needless in the game. Dagger works pretty good against them, it doesn't bonk on their head because it's really small. I don't even remember what the reward is. What the hell? Town of Horsery for the next boss. We lose to gravity on the way in, but hey, at least it's not a lazy duplicate of a boss this time. It's a lazy duplicate of a basic enemy from later in the game. Is that better? I don't know. But we can summon five demi-humans to fight two Nox sisters, and the math works out in our favor. We're never gonna have 60 intelligence we need for the Lustad staff, so kind of a waste of time. Kale has a little tool that should make the death right birds easier, the holy pot recipe. Testing it out, it works fine when it actually lands, but we're trying to throw a baseball at a bird, and that's not easy. I guess maybe it is. I've never tried to hurt a random animal. The ice halberd is good enough to finish it off because, I don't know, I was holding it. I think they're even immune to frostbite, is that? probably wasn't like the best tool. Now this jail cave is a huge waste. You need two stone sword keys to open it, but you can just hop up in Limgrave to get the reward for free. Also, this cave sucks. Most of them do, but this one uh, sucks more. The boss is a frenzy duelist. I think he probably has frenzy attacks, right? We don't get hit with any of them. So if he does, I don't know. Caleb Marathon time. Get the grace near the pickle bird farm. Scoop up Craig Blade, an absolutely amazing Ash of War that boosts damage and stance pressure at the same time. Then go into the Caleb Catacomb for a bunch of grave glove wart to level up some basic spirit ashes. We get rotted before another cemetery shade fight and end up dying. But believe me, this one is easier than the one with the gank. And it's worth more runes. Because who cares? It's just an arbitrary number you can put on bosses when they reward you with nothing. Oh boy, kindred of rot ashes? I'm stoked to have a terrible version of pest threads on an ally that can't take more than two hits. Cool. Clean rot duo next. We do this like every run, but oh my god, it matters. I'm complaining about the shit rewards we've been getting for every little dungeon boss. With the gold scarab, those shit rewards turn into fart rewards. Still not great, but not as bad. Putrid Avatar snipes us from way downtown while I was grabbing this jar. Then it's time for the, the, oh, I forgot. Um, the jelly donut catacombs, sure. Find the lever, pull it, and fight two Erd Tree Burial Watchdogs at the same time. Craig Blade gets them to break down twice, but both of them swing their giant AoEs in such a tiny arena, it's a pain. Jail Tunnel next. Totally different than Jail Cave. And the enemies on the way down are so much worse than the boss, the Magma Worm. It's an answer to the question, would you rather fight 10 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? Apparently, the answer is horse-sized duck at least in Elden Ring, because having 10 little horses nipping at your heels when you can only look at one at a time, or even if you don't lock on and just free aim the camera, you can only face one direction. So if they're surrounding you from all sides, you're kind of screwed. Anyway, Moonvale unlocked. We're not gonna use it. 
Speaking of cool swords we probably won't use, let's go into Carry a Manor for the Sword of Night and Flame, which requires 24 faith and intelligence, so nah, maybe someday. But for now, nah. The red ends up being more complicated than it needs to. I wanted to summon Latena at the top of the stairs, but you can't summon until Lorena spawns in, and she can bring a horse into the house even though we can't. Summoning Latena ends up being this whole ordeal, and after we do get her out, Loretta just kills her pretty much instantly. Sloppy win. Now we can go behind Carry a Manor and fight the Onyx Lord. That's easier and worth less runes than Loretta, but you can't get to it until you beat Loretta, so it's after in this run. It drops Meteorite. Bad spell. Celia Tunnel next. Since I don't actually know where that is in the overworld, we just warp there from Limgrave. It's another horse duck situation. The spiders here have super pest threads. If the Spirit Ash version could do damage like this, I would use it. I have to poke through slowly, killing everything on the way down or it's going to hit me in the ass and kill me. By the time we make it to the Falling Star Beast, we only have two flasks left, but I've never really seen these dudes as much of a threat. I mean, I think they're rad, but I recall people saying that they're the hardest field boss when bell bearing hunters and Deathrite birds exist? Really? Hell, I'd put the Knight's Cavalry higher. Maybe even Tree Sentinels. I like these things, but I just don't think they're that hard. Next boss is Battle Mage Hughes, which means we have to go to the Dragon Barrow. And you know what's on the way to the Dragon Barrow? The Physic Flask. Finally. We are over nine hours into this run. I could have speedrun this game twice with a lunch break, but we have the Physic. Finally! And you know what else? The Mama Dragon is on the way to Hughes. So we get a few free levels, like a number of levels where we almost might feel the difference. I think things are finally turning around. Against Hughes, there's a big branch you can use to make him whiff his spells. Then I just hit a few Reduvia beams until he died. Nice. Final boss of the stream is another Deathrite bird, and we can't get high ground for pots, so we just kind of whiff all of them over the course of several deaths. Die a lot. Then we win by just mashing it. She's mashing it. And hey, now we're ending our third stream. A third of the way through the bosses. That means there's probably six more streams. Oh no. Well, may you be for the revolution. We're back again and it's finally time to go to Altus. Since the ruin strewn precipice is blocked by a boss, that means 10 hours in, we finally get to imagine Fort Height. It's been 84 years. Then right over to Fort Ferreth and we have just enough vigor to live a rat bite. Welcome to sunny Altus, time to go right into a goddamn cave. It's the Perfumer's Grotto and the boss is Capra Demon with a big flower? Wait, did I accidentally turn a randomizer on? No, I'm playing on a PS5, can't do that. The flower has a Death Star laser, that's pretty cool. Attempt two, the Demi Humans, and I focus the Capra Demon first, then bully the flower that can't move. That part's pretty easy. Time for a little revolution. Gilka is a Demi Human queen, but these Demi Humans have decided to ditch the monarch Key. Ritual Sword Talisman, my beloved. The Caelid Knight's Cavalry will always have enemies near it. I was hoping we could get the big crow to simply stomp them, but it ends up stomping us instead. Try it again with some mashing, and now we have dogs chasing us as well. You're just gonna have to deal with a bunch of things at the same time. The major story bosses hard carry this game. So much of it's just filler, which really sucks. If there was one Knight's Cavalry, it would be a cool fight that really stands out as memorable. There are nine. Imagine a restaurant had chicken tenders, chicken strips, chicken nuggets, chicken fries, dino chicken nuggets, impossible chicken nuggets, fried chicken cutlet, chicken spaghetti, and chick chicka boom boom, along with 156 other items. They're just not all going to be up to the same quality. Sanguine Noble, only one of those is a boss, and it's just pushed into a hole somewhere in Altus. Cool. Worth noting, we now have enough decks for the Bloodhound Fang, and even though we're just scraping the requirements of the weapon, it hits like a truck. Finally, we are moving. Sage's Cave next for another black. Black Knife Assassin, this one's invisible, so how do you hit it? Summon some demi-humans, and if they can see it, they'll surround it, then you can whack it. If you're having trouble whacking it, just ask five friends to circle around you and beat it together. This is a traditional Spartan bonding exercise. All this tunnel next, fight everyone on the way down, then fight the Crystallian duo. Two at the same time with super armor is kind of absurd, but as long as there isn't a third, we'll be fine. What if we went back to the Sage's Cave? It's been like five minutes. Garrus kills us in two hits. That's fine. Come back and win. NPCs are a real bugaboo with low vigor since they don't really work like the standard enemies. Back to the Dragon Barrel, but we'll come from the bottom in the town of Horsery to swing past the Plague Church. Then it's Celia Hideaway time. Now we have three Crystallians, all with super armor, with ranged attacks, and rot. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. Who would do this? 
And for what? Crystal Torrent? That's not a cool crystal version of your horse. It's just worse combat Azure. The bosses use a version of it with rot against you that you can't get. It's just me. Time for the uh, bubble guts catacombs and the perfumer and the misbegotten. If they don't care enough to put a unique boss in here, I don't care enough to learn the name of this place. Next one is the horse duck cave. We have three royal knights with tower shields for this place's horse ducks. And then the boss is a stone digger troll that I killed so fast I didn't even really get time to write about it. Then a putrid avatar. Then Dr. Wormface, which I was a little worried about. It's got death blight, but it turns out the bloodhound fang just kind of carves things up super fast. It's a little worth talking about though because it's boss number 69. Oh my god, the next boss are the Abductor Virgins! They can't be 69, because they don't fuck! Never mind, this is the best game ever. Oh, and on the way, we grabbed Blood Flame Blade, kill the Crab Man, go to Volcano Manor, get the pizza cutter that requires too much strength, Somber 6, Somber 5, and run through lava. Pacing works better if we make the Virgin joke after the 69 joke. Cope and see the Water Cave, we get to fight the Kindred of Rot, and their pest threads are good, so we die a couple times. They have the stamina of a wet napkin, though, and we have the Bloodhound Fang, so it's not a huge problem. Knight's Cavalry! again but in Altus with no other enemies around so it's easier than Kalid but worth more how novel falling star beast again but this one's outside is that harder no you can bring your horse I didn't but I could have whoopsie I ran up Gelmnir thinking this was demi human Margo but this is Maggie so I need to go to the other side and might as well get golden Val while I'm at it we'll probably hit 25 faith eventually and that's a solid buff even in the late game Anastia tries to stop us but we won't die to her twice climb some ladders what a thrill buy the volcano pot recipe, and then pop into the volcano cave. Time for the demi-human revolution. Seize the means of production. Oh, they're distracted by the demi-humans outside that we ignored on the way into the boss fight. Thankfully, no real-life revolution would ever be ruined with infighting. Leftists famously get along with other leftists. Jar cannon, we're not using it. Moving on. Another black knife assassin, only worth noting because it drops the black knife, which is such a good weapon if your stats are all over the place. It does percentile damage, so it doesn't matter if your base damage is stinky then finally after 12 hours of in-game time it's Margaret. there is so much filler before you get to the royal capital that if you focus on the lowest rune bosses in order Margaret is your 77th boss not your first even if you sprint to Margaret right at the beginning maybe you get 10 levels worth of runes so like Think about how much time we have wasted for useless crap. All bosses is just not something anyone should be doing. Give me Inferno Wings over this any day of the week. After that, I accidentally got my underground dragonkin soldiers confused. Whoops, we need to do the Noxtella one first, which isn't in Noxtella. It's in the Incel River. Cool. Ice Lightning Spear, not using it. Moving on. It's a good thing Anna is Polly, because O'Neill and I are bringing a bunch of friends to this party. Polyamory doesn't actually correlate with promiscuity. We're sex positive here, but that joke is dependent on a stereotype that can be harmful, and I apologize for that. If you're Polly and you like to party with a lot of people at the same time, that's cool, and if you don't, that's also cool. It's only important that you're comfortable with who you are and not doing things to satisfy the expectations of others. I could have just cut that joke, but to be honest, I could have either put in the addendum or talked about the Windham catacombs and another Erdtree watchdog. So like, I don't know, I'd rather do that. No gank on this one, and it's the most valuable one in the game. Until the putrid Erdtree trio in the DLC, I'm sure we got a trailer for that at the Game Awards. I'm gonna tell him. Don't you dare fight the ancestor spirit. I think this one doesn't teleport or have healing. At least it doesn't do either of those against us. So we just kind of smack the legs until we win. Final demi-human revolution against Maggie this time. Now they are fully liberated and that's kind of the story arc of this stream. We still fight a bunch more filler bosses to round out this stream. So Tibia Mariner, this time with a big spooky skeleton. It's spooky. Godskin Apostle, bleed it, it's weak to slash. This is actually the first one we're fighting, but since Bloodhound Fang is plus six at this point, it's not really even a speed bump. Smarag is if like Agil was blue and hung out near bugs that give you free mana. So it's easier and worth more than twice the runes. None of this makes sense. Raya Lucaria time, we take a death, jumping early on the bridge, that's my bad. Then we fight the Red Wolf of Radagon. First Red Wolf we fought, but plus six Fang hits the tiny HP pool, and we kind of just beat it down. Ending stream for, we are finally past the halfway point at 85 bosses, but it does feel like things are ramping up now. Maybe the back half won't be so bad.
Look how far we've come. 12 hours in and we're in the stranded graveyard. Exactly where we started. We're here to hit up the Cringe Folk Hero's Grave. I grab the Come Onion Seal, then go all the way to the bottom and fight our first ulcerated tree spirit. They're slimy, twisty little dudes, but they have blood unlike their avatar counterparts. Why? Did they used to be something else? That's just a theory. A Elden Ring theory. <laughs> Or he's a side tomb. This is one of the worst in the game. To explain it in Pokemon terms, it's a teleportation puzzle, like Silphco or Sabrina's Gym. To put it in deeper Pokemon terms, it's like if every trainer was a mandatory fight and had six fear rattatas. The teleportation is slow enough that the gargoyles can catch up to you and bleed you to death. Some of them hang out on ledges that you can't get to until you teleport. If you have a small amount of vigor, like we do, it's gonna be bad. It takes nine minutes just to get to the lever, but then we fight our horse duck, the Grey Warden Duelist. He has some pot friends, which checks out. The dude is rad. Obviously, he's holding. Death Right Bird in Kaled next. It's not going great. This guy can jump up in the air, jumps on me, I'm scared. I don't think we can win this fight first try. It's all over for me. Are you sure about that? W wait, who was that? And his name is John C. <laughs> Y'all, after everything we've been through, it's nice to know that sometimes dudes rock. Sealed Tunnel Time, the boss is an Onyx Lord. How is it different than the one behind Carrier Manor? You can summon for it, so it's easier. And it's worth more money, whatever. Dragonkin Soldier in the Saoirse Ronan River Well, how is this different than the one in the Incel River? This one doesn't have Frost Lightning, so it's easier and worth more money, whatever. Ulcerated Tree Spirit on Gelmnir. This one's probably harder. The environment gets messed up on a hill, so I got grabbed. All good, second try win. This Magma Worm is by Fort Laid, the sequel to Fort Height, coming soon in more ways than one. We put down our Torbjorn Loretta turret, and she immediately gets melted by liquid hot magma. All right, we'll just slash the Dragon Toast. It's fine. I was impatient, and we killed Gostok before he could open the gate. Weak. Now we have to do the safe path. All good, though. We can grab the Claw Talisman on the way, which boosts jump attack damage. The Fang already boosts jump attacks, and our Raptor Feathers also boost the damage, so jump attacks are going to hit really hard now. Finally, we can fight our first Shard Bearer, Godric the Grafted. 93 bosses in. That is a max load-sized oof. But we have a high level fang, it's just a matter of not getting hit. We could go activate the great rune for 40 more virtual levels, but I don't want to waste rune arcs. We have a few potential walls coming up, and burning through those seems like a bad idea. Tree Sentinel Duo next. This is what I wanted Poison Mist for. You can literally just poison them and wait 17 minutes to win. But y'all, this run already took so long, so I just wait for them to separate and fight them with the giant jump attack damage. Seriously, look at that damage. Ooh, our stats are bad for this weapon, and it still just blasts through them. Very cool. Up next is another Bell Bearing Hunter, but this one has more stance resistance? The rhythm we learned no longer works. Time to relearn the fight against one of the most aggressive and oppressive enemies in the game. Let me save you 15 minutes. Ow, 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 hey, we won. Kill me your hero's grave next, and boy, if this isn't the worst dungeon, I don't know what is. There's a shortcut that lets you skip it, but you have to dodge a charging semi-truck and land on a diving board, then jump on another semi-truck with a slippery-ass icy physic top. It doesn't really work. We're at the boss. Another Red Wolf. Real horse-sized duck here. Remember how I said Falling Star Beasts were cool? Well, they still are. This one just has twice as much health, even though it drops a comparable amount of smithing stones. It's in an arena that's cool in theory. This crater evokes a sense that this star fell like some sort of crashing moon animal. In practice, hills aren't a great place to fight bosses. For the same reason Anakin gets halved in episode three, high ground. It either makes us whiff our attacks aiming up, or because we're using jump attacks, makes us fully hop over the rock monster. This goes pretty bad. Let me save you another 15 minutes. Ow, 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 ow. Hey, we won. Hitting the Omega Laser is actually one of the better punish windows. Finally, a new boss on the list, Elmer of the Briar. He's in the Shaded Castle, and I really don't remember this guy. We usually just grab Millie's arm and leave. On the way, we get horse ducked, but that's okay, because there's no other boss named Elmer. This one is gonna be unique. Surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. I am livid. At least you can summon for this one, which makes it easier than the other one in Altus, but who cares, right? This is all a joke. I'm the jokester, baby. Let's take a second to be positive. I really do love Elden Ring, and some of the levels 
pretty cool. Like the ruin strewn Oedipus, my favorite mother trucking level in the game. It's kind of a pun, but it's also kind of true. It's not just a cave. You constantly move in and out of the cave, making your progress, climbing up and seeing how high you're getting. You can move around the columns in cool ways. The bats sing to drip this place in atmosphere, and near the top, you can see the Dectus Lift, which is the other path to Altus. Then you fight Makar, which is a pretty cool fight if you haven't fought other magma worms yet. This is also the coolest magma worm arena by far. Then you pop out to the top and hit Altus. It's just such a memorable, cool moment. We didn't do that part this time, but it's really rad. God help me. I think I'm about to compliment a hero's grave too. Sainted hero's grave is the gold standard of hero's graves. No chariots already a win. Instead, the puzzle is laid out in front of you intuitively. There's a gargoyle that's standing in the light. You run up to it, you can fight it. Then, you bump into grayed out gargoyles you can't fight. Huh, something's different. It teaches you that the light makes the enemies vulnerable, then shows you a Grave Warden duelist. The rest of the game so far should have taught you that these dudes rule and are always worth fighting, so when you lure them all the way back, it feels like you really outsmarted the puzzle, even if that was the intended solution. Not totally sure why the boss is a hero of Zamor? Not totally sure why it drops Kristoff ashes instead of Zamor stuff that it's holding? Kind of feel like this one could drop the hero of Zamor stuff, then just open a chest in the back of the room for Kristoff, but whatever. Still like a 7 out of 10 dungeon for a hero's grave? That's high praise! Don't worry, we're back to filler though. Remember Godric? Well, they took away his phase 2 and added more runes to him when you win. The Godfrey icon is great. We're not using charged ashes this run, so I mean, we probably won't use it. Ariza hero's grave is the anti-sancted hero's grave. This one sucks. Intuitively, it teaches you the chariot will kill you. Jump off a cliff to die less. Then there are two chariots with staggered disjointed timing. Since it's disjointed, sometimes they move at the same time and you're just not allowed to dodge. Ha 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 ha. Sometimes one takes forever to spawn in and while you're waiting for it to pass, a basilisk will come in and vape you out of your safety hole so you leave the safety hole right when the chariot spawns. When you finally get through, you have to raise a column. This will make the chariots explode later. Why? I don't know, but it does. It doesn't make the chariot outside explode. So if you don't want to die or warp back, you have to take a hit. Cool. And then you get to fight the Crucible Knight duo. Even with Spirit Ashes, these two are freaking way too aggro. First attempt beats us down. Come back in and yeah, the Demi-Humans got bodied. It's a 2v1 again. But that doesn't matter because we're not using crappy spells like Catch Flame. We're using a weapon we barely have the stats to use. Even though it has bleed and these dudes can't bleed, it doesn't matter. With a weapon, you get to attack and you have enough time to dodge. Nailed it. Another death bird, I greased the fang up with some holy damage, but I did it too early. Whoops, last half of the fight, we just kind of mash it. Exicus is probably the worst dragon, loves to jank up on hills and just kind of hover in the air, very cool. He also vapes, that's not good for you. At least smoking helps your T-zone. Next up, Renala, who gets absolutely washed by the fang. Only worth mentioning because we're finally done with our second shard bearer at total boss 104. It's the Knight's Cavalry, just as hard as it always is. Will it fall off or not. I guess I could fight it, but I'm sick of fighting these dudes. It's a horseback fight. No thanks. Time for the last bell bearing hunter and this is the worst one. Unlike Elmer, we can't summon for this one. And after two deaths, we've officially entered a negative KD ratio on bosses. We're at 165, so it's only gonna get worse from here. And it gets worse on this boss, but I'll save you 13 minutes. Ow, 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 done. We saved two minutes on this one. That's improvement. How is this dude worth less than Grail, or the Putrid Avatar, or the Beast Men? After that, the Draconic Tree Sentinel is so free, feels like he gives you windows to heal. Insane to say that Mr. Here's a Fireball to add to your Red Flask gives better healing windows, but the Bell Bearing Hunters don't stop attacking until you break their stance. It's insane. It has never taken us this long to get to the city. I think this is already the longest run we've ever done, period. Absolutely bananas. This third tree avatar doesn't count as a boss, but it drops a Lord's Rune, and I can't really turn that down. We're not actually here for the Godfrey Shade. That's quite a few bosses down the list. Instead, we're going into the sewer. 
Cowabunga. You ever think about how the Ninja Turtles have to smell like shit? Not metaphorically, like literally smelling like shit. We get horse ducked by some omens and lobsters before making it to the Lindell Catacombs. This one's normally really bad, but I've done it a lot, and I know it's pretty straightforward once you figure out how it gaslights you. That might be part of the suffering of this run. We're just going to a lot of places I haven't practiced over and over again. It's maybe my third time doing most of these dungeons, and god, they are miserable. Since Esker drops good stuff, I've done this one a lot. He doesn't have have much health, it's pretty easy, and we get the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which will turn our damage up to 20% after we make someone bleed. We have a bleed weapon. We'll use this a couple times. Back to Volcano Manor, we'll actually get to fight the Noble. Get stabbed. Bummer, dude. Then we get to hit it through the column next time it does the rollout. Fox hit cheese. Lancey Axe next, and boy, I never fight this lady. Torrent is not the way to go. Hits stun the horse, then the horse dies, then you die on the ground because the hitboxes just sort of never end. Next time we summon Latena up on the hill to keep chipping away, but it also doesn't go well. Eventually we make it work, just stick into those toes you can't lock onto for some reason. Even though it's so much harder to hit the ancient dragon heads than it is to hit the normal dragon heads. Back to the dragon barrel now, normally I just ignore the balls while going down the hill, but I I don't think that's a good idea. We died three times. Yeah, when you're going down, definitely don't ignore the balls. Dragon Barrow Cave has two beast men. I didn't even summon the right spirit ash. It doesn't matter. How the hell are these worth more than the bell bearing hunter? Hey, let's talk about the weirdness of Red Main Castle. Because we've been to Altus, it's in party mode. There are Altus bosses worth less than the Crucible Knight and Misbegotten. So we have to go to Altus first. But then you can't get the castle out of party mode until you beat Radon. So even though Radon Radon is worth more than the Crucible and Misbegotten, we end up doing Radon first. Let's talk about that fight. He doesn't make it to phase two. Bloodhound Fang. It's uh, pretty great. If you're doing a 16 hour run, this will speed it up. More weirdness, beating Radon also unlocks Nakron, which means there is another boss worth less than the Crucible Knight and Misbegotten, the Mimic Tier. It's the Mimic Tier, and we don't have good vigor, so it's actually easier than normal. Kick Jaren out, and we can finally do the Crucible Knight and Misbegotten, which are barely worth anything at this point, 16,000 runes. This one also has the decency to be a staggered gank, like you have a few seconds to beat the Misbegotten before the Crucible Knight shows up. It's not a ton of time, but it's enough to encourage you to be aggressive. I don't love this fight, but it's better than most of the other gangs. Back underground for some more cleanup. Remember how we were in the royal capital? Yeah, it's lovely that we got to see the light of fun for a second before being pulled back into the depths of the filler. Regal Ancestor Spirit is weak to holy, and that's important because it made me remember we have an amazing holy weapon, the Black Knife. Blade of Death just makes boss fights so much shorter, which is wild. We were already using the Bloodhound Fang. This is also the debut of the boys. The Great Shield Soldier Ashes are the best tank ash in the game. They're super aggressive, they're super bulky with the shields, and they even occasionally frostbite an enemy. Love them to death. Gargoyles next, busting out the boys to distract and blast with the Blade of Death. Really, nothing's gonna live through that. Even wholly resistant enemies don't live through that well. Speaking of, we dig through the deep roots and hit the ants on the way in, but Siluria resists wholly. We don't care. Fia's champs are better at rolling, so we're gonna switch back to the Bloodhound Fang. Yeah, this damage is pretty good too. Mamma mia. Time for some dirty rotten scoundrels now. Let's go a little deeper into the incel river main, then deeper still into the lake of rot. There's lots of rot to go around, and it's enough chip to make the dragonkin soldier down here a bit of a problem. Apparently there are some more platforms I could raise, but I'd rather just bash my head into a wall instead of looking it up. Take a few L's, but they're fast L's, so I don't really mind. Back over to Caleb in the War Dead catacombs. War Dead, War Dead, War Dead, and out of this world. Uh, have you guys, have you guys watch uh, What We Do in the Shadows? Pretty good, pretty good show. Putrid Tree Spirit time. It's an ulcerated tree spirit, but more putrid if you like avoiding rot. And hey, who doesn't? You're gonna love these two bosses. Finally, at boss 119, we get to fight Grail, and like, he's usually in the first 10 bosses I fight. This guy's just super easy and worth a stupid amount of runes, which I think is why this challenge is so miserable. It extends the worst part of the game, setting up your build, and delays the fun part, using your build. I know it can seem kind of samey to fight the same Dragon Barrel bosses in every video, but doing it saves us the time of fighting a hundred other bosses to get the stats in a usable state. Combine the Pickle and the Golden Scarab, and Grail gives you enough runes to hit level 38 by themselves. 
themselves. How many Limgrave bosses would that be? The Dragon Barrel bosses are also out in the world. No catacombs, no dungeons, just boss, money, and leave. Now, Stell takes a lot of running around, but it isn't so bad. I just know what he does. So we put Latena by the door. She keeps the pressure up. I think people misinterpret what happens with Latena and assume she has good stance pressure. Not the case. They're still just arrows, but they stop the stance from resetting since it takes a few seconds for it to start sliding back down. Even though she's not leveled up, she's still making sure we get a lot more stance breaks when we summon here. Finally, we have done enough to fight a royal capital boss. On the way, I finally get the ritual shield talisman for 30% more defense at full health. It is a massive improvement when we don't have high vigor. Before the boss, we push the black knife up to plus nine, and now the Godfrey shade is super free. He does 100% physical damage, so he's basically tickling our great shield boys while we melt him from the back with the butter beam. Destined Death is so OP, I'm glad none of the bosses have it. The next boss is the Black Blade Kindred, using Destined Death. What a surprise! Oh, also Garonk is mad at us. Apparently at some point I gave him Death Spaghetti for the beast spells. Don't know why I did that. That means every time we lose to Spindly Legs McDestined Death over here, we have to quit out or Garonk is going to blast us with Beast Claws through the door. Just takes a little patience and a little distraction from the boys, and we can scoop up another win. Time to run errands for Ronnie. Fast forward a little bit. Get the knife. Yada 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 okay fight the baleful shadow get the wedding ring boom moonlight altar and electo is our next boss who just straight up bodies us as soon as we walk in oof you might not believe it but second try i remember how the assassins move lord knows i fought plenty of them this run sometimes we were under leveled sometimes they were invisible sometimes they were just like outside a dungeon for some reason but we practiced nonetheless I've got these moves down, ducking in and out of her attacks, managing my greed, and safely making our way through it. Feels pretty good, even if I never want to do it again. Next boss is Fortisax. What? No, you can't fight him until you burn down the Erd Tree. Unless you actually do the Fia Quest. Oh god, I have to do the Fia Quest. Okay, so apparently to make Roger die, you had to marry Ronnie. That's not true, but it worked for some reason. I don't give a toot about Ronnie, I just need to move this along. Hey, we're soulmates, right? What? Yeah. Whatever, if you want. Then Fia gives you a dagger to deliver to D. Where is D? Literally in the other room. She doesn't even have to walk. Literally just shout, Hey D, come here, let me stab you. At least then she moves down to the deep root depth so we can mash X to hug her. We don't have the... We don't have the curse mark of death yet, do we? Ugh. Okay, fall down the study hall. Do it backwards. What, who, who? Just get the thing, and then we're gonna call the stream over. This single stream was longer than the entire Hot Ones run. And it is stream five. Let's wrap it up next time. Kill you, makes you Hug quest time, and hey, let's level up Tish. If anyone can speed up the rest of the game, it's a lady with a second black knife. Fortis Axe is like Lancey Axe, but if there was more lightning, if you stand under their feet, sucks. Do it again, get a little luckier, and we're done with dragons for a whole minute. Up next is a doula. She isn't an ancient dragon though, thank God. I don't totally know how to dodge the moon blade on horseback, but I don't have to. That's what the ritual shield talisman's for. Now we can finally fight the putrid avatar in the dragon barrel. I swear to God, I could beat this thing within 15 minutes of starting a new game file. It is so annoying to wait this long for such a large load of runes. Speaking of large loads, let's level up the come onion seal in case we want to use a spell. It kind of will, but not really. Not in a way that matters. Up the Divine Tower of Kaled, and then down the Divine Tower of Kaled, where we can fight a Godskin Apostle. It's weak to Slash, we have Tish, not a problem. Now we'll go back to the sewer and fight the first version of Moog. This one doesn't bleed, but we're rocking Golden Vow now, which is a 15% damage buff and boosts our defenses by 10%. Things were flying before, now they'll fly faster. More God is next, it's about time. His holy defense is the highest, but hey, we don't care. Melt him down and move on. As we make our way to the four Biden lands, I think it's worth noting something. This run is also ending with us steamrolling every boss, just like the reverse order run did. If you're doing all bosses, I'm not sure there's a way to have a fun level of difficulty through the whole game, unless you end up like banning weapons, setting arbitrary caps, doing like region locking, I don't know. But at that point, just like play Dark Souls 3. I love using the black knife again, summoning some friends, spamming that ash. With the twins. 
Yeah, this boss is the Fell Twins. God, post 9-11 America sure was something, right? So red-blooded, we needed beer commercials that alluded to incestuous threesomes. That's, uh, uh, I guess that's the for Biden land's political take. We gotta save time. It's just wild the forms American exceptionalism will take. And maybe we should feel bad about that. Knights Cavalry next, we're gonna blast them with the Butterbeam when we can. Even when we miss, we hit the horse. That's fine too. If we kill the horse, we'll get a crit and that will win because the Black Knife has better crit damage. But the rider dies first so the horse can live. That's nice. Ignore that Blackblade Kindred. You're telling me the Blackblades have a Kindred deck? Probably Mardu, right? With the Holy Damage Burn and Menace. We have to hit the Giant Mountaintop Catacombs first, and this is probably the worst one in the game. It's so long with so many imps. It also adds in a Gaslight effect from the Lindell Catacombs and a bunch of traps. It's just a huge duck-sized horse situation. Ending with an Ulcerated Tree Spirit. It's not even putrid. That's a horse-sized duck if I've ever seen one. Some quick ones, that Blackblade Kindred we mentioned earlier, yeah, it's weaker than the one in the Dragon Barrow, so it's easier, cool. Spirit Caller Cave, hey, you should call her. Unless she told you not to, then leave her alone. Godskin Boo here, this one can't bleed, but it's still weak to slash and I don't care. Cloning her tree avatar, so scary, it's not. We're using Blood Flame Blade for a little extra fire damage, not much. It scales worse than most other buffs since it adds bleed to make up for that, but only scales with the faith scaling from your seal. We're using the Come Onion, which doesn't have the best faith scaling, whatever, it's still more damage. Spike also can't bleed, but we're using BFB for a touch more fire damage anyway. Win fast, easy. Death right bird with two black knives. Yeah, watch out. It's gonna melt. Giant Conquering Hero's Grave isn't that bad. There's a little alcove where you have to hide out from a flamethrower, and we get duck-sized horsed by an invincible gargoyle and a fire monk in that space. But then the imp doesn't chase us next time, so we can fight the giant, open the door, and beat up another hero of Zamor. Cool. Castle's hole next. Tish and I just blow up the soldiers, then blow up Nile. Stray Mimic on the way down to the snowfield. Yeah, it's a Mimic tier, so that's pretty easy. Now we can clear some bosses in the snowfield. The consecrated snowfield catacombs are but bad. I I don't like them. The boss is a rotten Grave Warden duelist. Must be really sick if he's hanging out somewhere this bad. Poor guy. Knights Cavalry duo this time, but you can fight them one at a time. Black Knife doesn't do great. Try it again with the Bloodhound Fang, and that works better. Cave of the Forlorn. This Misbegotten does, I don't know, some like some attack. Never gonna figure out what this dude does. Doesn't matter to me. Never gonna try and use this sword for anything. Finally just wreck him with a BFB BHK COMBO. Sorry if it seems like we're just kind of yada yada ing these bosses, but there isn't much to talk about anymore. These are the ones you've seen me fight a bunch. Borealis, Blade Beam, yada yada, Astel, Bloodhound Fang, yada yada, Rikard, Serpent Hunter, yada yada. Is yada yada bad? Oh, yada yada's good. She's very succinct. Now we have the Blasphemous Blade, and uh, <laughs> oh, this, this is just gonna go faster. See, here's the Taker's Flame against the Putrid Avatar. Yada, yada. Fire Giant, we go back to the Black Knife because it has 50% fire resistance, but like, big health pool don't matter. This does percentage damage. Yada. Right on to the Godskin Duo, they get melted with slashing, bleed damage, percentile damage from Titian, stance breaks from Bernie. Great Worm Theodorix, more like fine worm. The Octopus finishes him off for us. Dudes rock again, even Octopus dudes. No issues in the liturgical town or the Hallig Tree, so we just swag jump, fight Loretta, and melt her with a black knife. Swag jump again in Pharaoh Missoula, run through Alex's quest, kill him for 15% more damage from our Ashes of War. It's just snowballing now. Not only is it going going fast, we're getting pieces like the Alexander Shard and the Blasphemous Blade to make the rest of it go faster too. I fell off during the end of the bird run, but we can yada yada that and skip to Placidious Axe. Somehow, we get a stance break before a bleed, even though we're using Blood Flame Blade on an already bleeding weapon? Seriously, we've been hitting this dude this whole fight. Where is the bleed? Well, there it is. Second to last death of the run comes from the Big Turtle that hits us, stuns the horse, kills the horse, then kills us in three quick shots. That feels fair. Help it out with the barnacles so it stops shooting us then help Latena, because I feel a little bad about killing that old guy she was friends with. All of this is just clearing the area to fight the death right bird so that it gets melted with the black knife. Holy damage is good against it. That's the last boss I was worried about, so we'll go activate Godric's Great Rune and get plus five to every stat. We actually have really solid stats now, maybe a little spread out for damage, but the vigor is nice, the endurance is big enough for lots of armor, and we've got weapons that mostly scale with the upgraded level instead of stats, so it's fine. 
push things even higher by grabbing Flame Grant Me Strength for another 20% bonus to our fire damage and take our last death when we cowabunga off a cliff. Sorry for spoilers, but uh, it's time for Taker's Flame to take us the fuck home. Malakath doesn't even have particularly bad fire resistance, but this Ash of War just burns right through. Gideon is an old man, and it knocks him down. Falls are so dangerous at his age. Godfrey has a bit better defenses, but don't forget, Taker's Flame also has good stance pressure. So, the first one in phase two breaks him down, we crit, and the fight's done. For Moog, we have to switch back to the Black Knife because he has 80% fire resistance. Oh no! And Anyway. Yeah, dude's toast. Melania is almost a problem. Almost. Not in phase one. We just blow her up with Tish distracting her. Phase two is almost an issue. We run out of magic, but through the run, we've been saving Starlight Shards. So with some patience and a few safe hits with the sword itself, when we can get them, we're still able to win without an issue. Finally, Radagon. This dude is just a joke with the Blasphemous Blade. It makes sense that the Blasphemy Blade would be so good at killing gods. Elden Beast holds on a little better with the water to cool it off and the bigger health pool, but gamers, I didn't even bring red flasks. Didn't have to. Every time this hits, we get 30% of our health back. It's so silly. That's 165 bosses in ascending rune order with 194 deaths in 22 hours and 45 minutes. That's so long. It's so long that it actually keeps it out of F tier because the amount of time per death, one of our three metrics, is pretty good. And 165 bosses means that our time per boss was fine but because i played it i'm manually putting this in f tier so much of the time this run is spent in the bad parts of this game endless dungeons with endless imps struggling without vigor against bosses for rewards that don't matter this is my job y'all and most of the time it doesn't feel like it is it's just fun i like playing i like streaming i like making these videos for you but there were moments this time where i had to genuinely consider if this was less fun than working in a call center which was my job before i started doing this call centers are bad i'm sorry if you work at a call center hopefully this long video gave you a nice long poop break next week maybe we'll have a little more fun if you want to watch these runs live follow me on twitch we find new ways to play elden ring all the time join the patreon to support the channel and to see some exclusive videos and make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video